Take my hand. Take my hand. And welcome back to Unnecessary Invention. So I think that we've reached a new normal in our everyday lives. Social distancing is gonna be here for a while. And that's why I think I should be put in charge of coming up with a few solutions of properly social distancing ourselves, but still having some sort of intimate physical contact without actually coming in contact with each other. That's what we're gonna do. Sometimes you just wanna hold someone's hand while you're walking down the street but six feet apart, that is a little difficult. So today we're gonna build a six foot long, extending, folding arm that has a hand on each side so you can hold that hand, have a six foot pole, and the other person can be holding the other side of it so you can pretend and imagine that you're holding the other person's hand, but you're not and you're being safe. Oh, and just a reminder, staying home is the safest option right now. I'm building for the future and the world that we're probably gonna be living in. So, let's get into it. So the one thing with pretty much everything being closed is I'm gonna have to use some equipment and stuff I already have in my office. So here we keep a whole bunch of wood. Let's see which size is gonna work. We should have some dowels here. These ones are definitely gonna be too small. I think these guys will probably work out well. And then we're gonna have to reuse some parts from the unnecessary wall. Let's go digging. So other than the wooden dowels that we're gonna use for the extending arms, we need the hands that we're gonna hold on to. So normally I would cast my hand in silicone and that is what we would use, but we're gonna have to reuse a few hands. And here is one of them. So let's see, I should have another one somewhere around here. And we've got our two hands. And luckily it is a left and a right hand, so that way on each end you'll be able to properly place it and hold it and have some intimate connection with the person you're walking with. Let's go design the brackets that are gonna go onto the rods that will 3D print. And typically for my videos, I kinda graze past all of the 3D design stuff that I do, but I'm gonna take a little bit more time and maybe uh, show you a few things that I do to actually 3D design the stuff that goes to the printer. Let's bring it down to the small screen. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. This is where I design all of my products. So I took some measurements before, so we're gonna go ahead and just start designing everything we need. So we're gonna have a 1.3 inch circle, and that is going to be five inches high. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a construct and go down 2.5 inches. That way we can divide this exactly in half. Oh, and one quick thing. I learned all of this stuff completely on my own using YouTube, so if you're a professional and you're judging me right now, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And to fit the dowels in, we need a circle that is 1.13 inches. We're gonna go down into there, 1.2 inches. And so within this hole is where the dowel is going to stick in, and then we need one for the other side. We'll do a quick circle. 1.13 inches, go down, not up, down. We're going up, we're going down. So the next thing we need to design is a hinge in between those two points. You don't want a six foot pole that you have to carry around, so at three feet right in the middle, it's gonna hinge and that will make it a lot easier to carry around. So in here, we'll make sure we have the center line connected and go and make a nice rectangle box. So we want it to be 1.3 inches and we want it to be 0.7 inches tall. And then you wanna make sure here that it is exactly 2.5 inches from the base and that will make sure that it is flush to the bottom. Then we wanna add a second piece that goes up into there and that's where it's gonna hinge and we'll have sort of a pin that goes through the center of there and it'll hinge on that circular pin. So now this will be able to move 180 degrees when you don't wanna carry that six foot long pole. But with that, I think we're all set to hit the 3D printer. So let's go set those things up and we'll move on from there. Maybe I'll take up karate or something in isolation. There's gotta be some sort of like online karate classes. What have you guys been doing during isolation? Go comment down below if you learned something new within the past month and if I should learn it too.
or something else I should maybe learn. However, while those finish up on the 3D printer, let's go ahead and do the few things I wanted to do to the dowels so that they're all set and ready and we can start putting this thing together right as those are right as those are right as those are finished and complete and then we can put it together. The first thing that I need to do with these is measure them down to size. They are a little bit longer than three feet. I'm gonna have each end be three feet long. That way is a regulatory six foot social distancing when we put the two ends together. So all I have to do is cut off the excess parts and we should be in business. And the next step in the process is that they are a little bit rough, so we're gonna go ahead and give them a nice, beautiful sanding. Do some nice 80 grit and then up to 220 to make them extra soft and supple for when you're not carrying it by these silicone hands. And the last finishing touch is to give it a very nice finishing coat of polyurethane, a nice high gloss. We want this thing to be shining when you're walking down the street. So we'll just go ahead, put a nice coat of that on top of here, and then we'll be in business. Let's go, uh, let's go get those 3D parts. I got them, I got the parts. Here they are, I got them all. All of the parts are pretty simple, so hopefully they work together pretty well. And I printed them in two colors. So one side of it's gonna be white, one side's gonna be black. That way you can always remember which side is your side. If you're always holding the black hand, or if you're always holding the white hand, so that you don't transfer the germs to the other hand, and then the other person holds the other hand, and then they transfer the germs back to them, which defeats the entire purpose of why we're building this. And I printed this red pin to hold it all together. The hinge properly works, and then the lock snaps together. Now it's not going anywhere. I almost forgot the most important part. Does it fit inside? Of course it does, because I'm a genius. I am loving that two-tone design. I like the little red accent too, that makes it nice. Let's grab the other rod. And we are in business. Yeah, we're good, we're looking good. Ooh. So the only thing, oh wait, where are the hands? We've got one hand already off. I gotta get the other hand off of the mount from the old invention. Ah. <laughs> Not what I wanted to have happen. This is what happens when I can't go to the gym anymore. My muscles have just disappeared. All right, I'm getting that exactly. And we have both of our hands ready to go. And don't worry, I am gonna sanitize these before I go on a stroll with someone and use them for real. The only steps left are to glue the hands onto the bracket here, the brackets onto the end of the pole, the bracket in the middle of the pole, and then we're gonna have ourselves a brand new unnecessary invention, and I'll have to test it out somehow with myself or something, I'm not quite sure yet. So let me glue all these pieces together, and we'll reassess when it is A-OK -okay to go. I wanted to take a second to ask you one quick question. Would you like to go on a romantic hand-holding walk with me? Because we have a brand new invention that makes it possible. Woo! Not only that, you will always know which hand is yours based on the color-coded system I created, so you will know which hand you're supposed to hold at all times. This thing actually put all the way together makes you realize how far away six feet actually is. Take my hand, take my hand. It's really far. The hinge is fully functional and holding in place nicely. And other than that, I think I just need to figure out exactly how I'm going to do the product photos and videos for this one, because how do I go on a walk with myself? Luckily in Vermont, everything is closed, but we are allowed to go out and walk around, get some fresh air. So I think I'm gonna try and find an abandoned park. Well, not abandoned, but just a park that I think no one's gonna be at right now, and try and make it look like I'm walking with myself on both ends. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to see you in just a few and tell you exactly why it didn't work. However, the social distance hand holder is officially an invention, so let's put it to the test. I just need to find my hand lotion. All right, cheers. <sighs> Can you guess what happened? It's a few days later. So I did try to go get some product photos and videos, but I dropped it and it broke. Wah, wah, wah. So I had to 
all of the pieces that I attached to the dowels and reprint all of the 3D printed parts. I changed it up a little bit so that it was a little bit stronger. And remade a new one that works a lot better. Maybe a workout device. One, two, three. But this time around, I've got the studio set up over here. So I'm gonna take some product photos that way with this guy. And you can check them out, of course, as always, over on Instagram. You probably already saw one of the photos as the thumbnail of this video. It looks good, right? I don't know yet, but I think it looks good. If you enjoyed watching me make this completely unnecessary invention, go and smash that subscribe button. While you're there, go give me a big thumbs up on this video. I kind of hate when these inventions break and I have to redo them, so I'm kind of over it. But with that, I'm gonna go get going on these photos and I will see you at the next invention. See ya!